Hi and welcome to the multi-jet fusion process. We will go over how the process itself actually works, how the different systems interact with each other to be able to give you a part, for example the printhead and the agents. Multi-jet fusion process is often uh, confused with uh, two different other types of technology. You've got binder jetting and you've got SLS. Both are powder-based technologies but they work very differently to the way that the multi-jet fusion process works. Hopefully throughout this module you'll be able to understand the key differences between all three of them. They're not identical, but they are similar in the sense that they all use powder um, and specifically similar powders, which are thermoplastics, usually PA12s, PA11s, elastomeric materials. In a, in a binder jetting process, you have an agent that is applied, which is usually a binding agent. A binding agent is a bonding agent, a glue, which glues the powder particles together and creates a part. But often the parts are very brittle. If you drop them, they break because they're just powder glued together. If you have SLS, you have a laser that then sinters the powder selectively where you want the part to be created. With the multi-jet fusion process, we have a couple of different agents that interact with the powder to be able to give, give you a properly fused part. And we'll be able to see now through this process how that is different. The combination of the multi-jet fusion technology and the way that we fuse the materials with the composition of the material means that you achieve a higher isotropy, which means in the z-axis you get strength where you, where you lack in other technologies. What's more is that there's no major difference between the uh, x and y orientation and the z orientation, um, which makes it far superior to other technologies and specifically other powder-based technologies. Let's have a look, a deeper look at how it actually works. In terms of the actual fusion process itself, um, there are effectively two agents that we use. We use them to increase the thermal selectivity during the printing process. There are two agents and on this sort of uh, animation on your screen you'll be able to see a fusing agent and a detailing agent. The fusing agent is applied um, to the areas where you want the uh, energy absorption to be increased um, and uh, it's where you want the part to actually be created or melted or fused which is why we call it a fusing agent. The detailing agent is used um, and added at the boundaries of the part to prevent heat conduction um, from the parts to, to the fresh material and ensure a sharp and accurate part and it effectively cools that area or stops the energy from being absorbed into that area. So you have your select boundary of where you want the part to be created and where you don't want it to be created. Looking at the actual process itself, you have a layer of powder that is applied to your, to your bed um, and at the moment our layer thicknesses that we work on is about 80 micron. So you have an 80 micron layer of powder that is uh, applied with a, a recoater and compacted as it's applied um, and then we apply um, an agent to it or two agents to it. The fusing agent, which is the black agent in this picture, um, and the reason for why it is, is black is because black is better at absorbing energy um, than, than uh, white or other colours. Um, so just like you have um, on, a on sort of normal, pa if you had paper and you printed black ink on it, you would find that the areas that were black would be hotter than the areas that would be white if, the, if it was in direct contact with sunlight. So what we do with our process is we apply infrared energy through infrared lamps to the uh, agents or to the top of the print bed. Um, the carriage goes across the top and um, is uh, the areas where the darker agent or the fusing agent is applied absorbs all of the, inf uh, the infrared energy and actually melts properly to its melting point to, be, to create a properly fused plastic uh, part. And then the areas where the detailing agent are, it stops fusion from happening. And that process is repeated layer by layer until you get your part built up. So looking at the, uh, the, the print head in more detail, in our 5200 series and our 4200 series we have um, three print heads in uh, the print carriage um, and these print heads contain or apply the detailing agent and the fusing agent through the thousands of tiny little nozzles that are in them. Um, the print head itself uh, is actually an amazing piece of engineering um, and in the next video you'll be able to see that. It was developed by somebody called Ross Allen um, who was actually a rocket propulsion engineer. So when somebody says to you that printing is not rocket science, it actually is. <laughs> so um, you'll be able to see in the next video um, how amazing these print heads are um, and how much engineering has gone into them 
um, the nozzles themselves are about the thickness of a strand of hair. Um, so they are very susceptible to um, things like blockages actually. So we have to make sure that we maintain and keep them um, to, uh, in their best conditions when they're in use um, because they are surrounded by powder dust particles um, and heat, which probably isn't the best two things for them. Um, but we've developed uh, a whole extensive uh, cooling system um, inside of the print carriage that enables us to make sure that they stay um, to the best and highest level of quality. There are two groups of nozzles near the left and right edges of the die. Each group has its own ink supply, so the printhead can print one or two colors. With one ink, the two groups provide built-in nozzle redundancy for reliable quality and high-speed printing. A bead of epoxy at each end protects connections to electronic circuits on the die. Zooming in closer, you can see the left-hand group has two columns of nozzles. Let's cut away most of the die to look in cross-section at the area around one ink feed slot. The cyan region is filled with HP water-based ink. The wedge-shaped area is an ink feed slot cut through the silicon. It supplies ink to the nozzles. The print head's electronic and fluidic components are built on a silicon substrate, shown in gray. HP builds thousands of identical nozzles and chambers on each die. A high-resolution optical process used with light-sensitive polymers produces features with integrated circuit precision. When generating drops, the nozzles in the two columns fire in a sequence that minimizes fluidic interference. Let's take a closer look at a drop generator. So you can see inside, we've made the nozzle plate and cyan ink transparent. Three walls surround a heater resistor on the silicon, and the chamber is open to the ink supply through a restriction. Two pillars prevent particles from clogging the chamber and nozzle. The nozzle is filled with ink, and the meniscus is the surface where the ink meets the air. A human hair is thicker than the chamber and nozzle together. The clock shows time in microseconds. The resistor heats the ink, and a bubble of ink vapor pushes ink out of the nozzle and down the refill channel. Bubble collapse pulls the meniscus and fresh ink into the chamber. The bubble collapses at 20 microseconds, and the meniscus settles at about 50 microseconds. The chamber and nozzle are designed for specific drop weight and ink properties. So uh, I hope you agree with me that that is an absolutely amazing piece of engineering that we've got right there. Um, and and uh, rightfully so, we're trying to use that uh, print head across as many of our technologies as possible. So that same print head, um, just in a different length, is used in the uh, 500, uh, 300 series as well, which is the colour and the mono printers. Um, and in, the, in those printers, we just have one single very long print head rather than the three individual ones. Um, this uh, next video that we're going to go on to now is going to explain to you in more detail what a voxel actually is. Um, so we keep uh, describing a voxel or voxel level control um, and um, a lot of people probably don't know what a voxel is. Now a HP voxel is slightly different to a voxel but effectively a voxel is a pixel but in 3D, um, in three dimensions. Um, and we have our own size for a voxel because that is how we identify a specific voxel to, to enable us to fuse it. Um, and this vid video will give you an idea of that. In 3D design and printing, a voxel represents a value on a regular grid in a three-dimensional space, like a pixel with volume. By controlling the properties of each individual voxel through agents, HP Multi-Jet Fusion can produce parts that can't be made by other methods. Taking advantage of HP's in-depth knowledge of color science, HP's 3D printers could in the future selectively print a different color at each volumetric pixel. A single 3D printed part could have literally millions of colors. But more than just full color printing of functional parts, HP's multi-agent system enables a fundamentally different approach that could unlock the full potential of 3D printing. At each voxel, HP transforming agents could control surface texture, wear, and friction, enabling single parts with multiple textures or the monitoring of part performance. The transforming agents could control the translucency of each voxel, enabling the printing of lenses or sensors. 
We could also optimize the strength and stiffness in portions of a part and print elastic voxels in other portions of the part. The conductivity of certain voxels could also be controlled, enabling embedded electronics. And where HP is uniquely uh, placed is that we can actually develop and manipulate our agents um, in the future. And at the moment, we've managed to do that, firstly, by applying colour. So by using colour agents, we're able to apply colour to a part, being able to give us um, a full colour part um, on the external surfaces. Um, and the, the, the future could hold, for example, the conductivity, like was mentioned in the video, or being able to manipulate um, different types of textures or different types of uh, mechanical properties in one uh, material with different types of agents. Um, so as well as being able to develop materials, they're also developing agent side of things as well. And now I would like to leave you with a video showcasing the newest member of the Multi-Jet Fusion range. Introducing the HP Jet Fusion 5200 Series 3D Printing Solution. Made up of a printer, build unit, processing station, and HP's first natural cooling unit. Now you can unleash new growth and scale your production with a streamlined workflow designed for production environments. The process begins with HP's easy-to-use SmartStream 3D software, which allows you to prepare the build. And with the latest HP 3D process control software, you can achieve dimensional accuracy and repeatability faster by applying consistent process controls across your jobs and production fleets. The build unit is inserted into the HP Jet Fusion 5200 3D processing station for materials loading. Fresh and reused material is mixed and loaded into the build unit in a cleaner, automated process. The build unit is then inserted into the printer, pre-print and in-printer checks are completed, and production can start. With HP Multi-Jet Fusion technology, the 5200 series delivers functional parts with best-in-class isotropy and a uniquely predictable and consistent print time for any type of part. The one-pass printing mode gives you high building speeds without compromising on mechanical and dimensional properties or look and feel. And with the HP 3D Center, you can track your jobs and manage your production fleet at any time. When the job is complete, the build unit is inserted into the processing station for cooling. With the HP Jet Fusion 5200 series, you have the option to cool the job inside the build unit or take advantage of HP's most economical continuous 3D printing with the HP Jet Fusion 3D Natural Cooling Unit. The finished job is transferred to the Natural Cooling Unit, removed using the HP recommended Hoffman Forklift 5200, and then stored and left to cool. Meanwhile, the build unit is free to be loaded with material and used for the next job, so you can keep printing at full capacity, enabling best-in-class economics and productivity. Once cooled, the job can be unpacked and any unused material recovered for reuse in future builds. The empty natural cooling unit can then be stored, ready for the next job. The HP Jet Fusion 5200 Series 3D Printing Solution gives you manufacturing predictability, along with breakthrough economics and productivity, so you can scale your production and expand into new applications and markets. You're one step closer to manufacturing the future.